Hi, Deborah Vogler here reporting from CONFAB 2011 in Las Vegas. My guest is on Stegen from IMEC, and I hope I didn't mess up your name no, too that badly. Was, that was right. <laughs> that was All right. right. Well, um, could you summarize for our viewers mm -hmm. what IMEC believes will be the likely roadmap heading to less than 10 nanometer resolution? Yes, of course. So, as you've heard already this morning in, in, in the conference, is that um, in semiconductor industry, a lot is still driven by Moore's law. And Moore's law says that every two years, the, the number of transistors has to scale, uh, basically. Uh, the number of the transistors has to double to basically offset the, the increasing R&D costs. So that's still the driver for what we are doing at IMEC. Up till the, the 90 nanometer node, uh, Moore's law it was easy to do. Easy to do. It was lithography enabled. Gate length scaling, dielectric scaling, that was basically what we did to get the performance, the power, and the area that we needed node to node. Once in the 90 nanometer uh, time frame, the dielectric leakage became so high that other inventions, other enablers had to be found uh, basically to, to get the power and performance uh, for, the, for the upcoming nodes. And that's where material innovation came in. Uh, high K is a good example of, of basically how to offset the gate leakage. Uh, the new architectures, device architectures, as we've heard Intel announced recently, uh, the FinFET, the ultra-thin uh, ultra uh, SOI, yes. that basically are now fully depleted devices that help you to, to lower the off-current of the device. There are many currents in the device that when you start scaling are really becoming problematic. So new materials, new device architectures came in 90 and beyond to basically help the, the power performance. Now, uh, to get further, this is going to be a continuous trend. Mm -hmm. Lithography will remain sure. here. We have to continue to scale. New materials, material innovations, new architectures are going to continue to be there. And usually, once you've introduced one of these elements, they remain there for a couple of generations. Sure. You just have to keep on um, uh, inventing, keep on, 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 on improving that particular module. High K, it's not the end of the road yet. We still need to further scale the dielectric thickness, even with yes, high K. Yes, yes. Yes. And that is another challenge to how to meet the reliability requirements with scaling high K. Mm. Uh, for device architecture, the new uh, Trigate FinFET uh, uh, architecture we have today, well, how do we scale that into the, the next generation? Scaling the fin dimensions, what's the control? How can you control that in, in manufacturing? That's going to be critical questions that we have to answer. And then there is, of course, also mm -hmm. Little. I mean, Little will have to continue to scale those dimensions. And well, the industry says that the trade-off is going to be around like a 22 nanometer half pitch. Yes, yes. This is, of course, first going to be uh, reached probably in, in, the, in, the, in the memory, where Flash NAND is basically getting there pretty <laughs> soon to that mm -hmm. cliff. So if you look at, yeah, when is the, the ARF versus EUV transition going to happen? Well, they say 22 nanometer half pitch is kind of this cliff. Mm -hmm. Um, so what has been happening, ARF, of course, the, the more mature of the little technologies, uh, exposure tools, the enhancement techniques, they're very well established. The problem is, of course, going to these very small dimensions, the enhancement techniques, you have to keep on adding enhancement techniques uh, to get to these dimensions. And that becomes complicated. You get into dual patterning uh, techniques that you have to, per level, that you basically have to double the amount of masks almost to get to your dimensions. It increases the costs. It increases control, line width control. If you have to do two masks per layer, you have an, an additional overlay spec that you actually have to meet. So, so it, 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 it's, it's, hard, it's hard to do. It's hard to scale and continue to scale with ARF. So and then there is, of course, the new uh, EUV. Yes, and yes. Uh, like, like you know, IMIC has been working as one of the <laughs> pioneers with ASML on EUV. And um, we have to say in EUV there are three things that need to come together. It's the tool itself, yes, it's yes. the resist, and it's the mask. Now you have actually three years, uh, three years worth of data. Yes. I mean, you've been working yes. on it, uh, yes. uh, especially with respect yes. to tool characterization. Yes. What about uh, source power yes. and are there other yes. showstoppers? Yes. Well, I guess yes. there are no more showstoppers, but... It's a continuous improvement that we yes. need in all the areas, actually. But, but yeah, so, so IMEC had the first system, the ADT system, uh, about three years ago. So there, the key challenge 
was to improve the, 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 the uptime of the tool. Yes. Source was one of the main issues there. And we have to say, uh, over the last three years, the, the uptime of the ADT system has continuously improved. The, mm -hmm. the output waivers now that we have had, we've seen on the ADT system has been continuously improving. Mm -hmm. Now, we are very glad to announce also that our new system, the, the NXT yes, 3100, yes. is up. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it has been installed. Uh, uh, we accept uh, the site uh, acceptance test to, to be done by end of May. Mm -hmm. And there the source power has already improved like about 20 times over the ADT. Now, when you talk about source power, and if you, I translate that in wafers mm -hmm. per hour, where on an ADT system we're talking about a couple of hours per mm -hmm. wafer, we hope uh, uh, when we get the site acceptance test on the NXC at least to be already 20 times mm -hmm. better than mm -hmm. that. So approximately five, six wafers per hour. And what about resists and, yes. and mask data? Yes. Do you have any uh, updates yes. that you can so share with our audience? Yeah, so we basically have been working on, uh, in parallel on resists and masks too. Uh, I would say the new element coming in in the masks because of the, the multi-layer masks that you have mm -hmm. in the EUV, um, there is one type of defect in these masks, which is the embedded contamination. That is actually very interesting, but you cannot detect that in, uh, during mask inspection. It's only when you've printed on the wafer that you see that these embedded defects really cause defects on your wafer patterns. Mm -hmm. So we have been working on trying how to detect those, those uh, embedded defects uh, up front. Uh, basically, with, by doing AFM, you can see a slight uh, uh, like roughness in mm -hmm. the, on your mask. That's the way you can detect it. And then we're finding compensation techniques to actually kind of like compensate for that defect on the mask. Mm -hmm. So that on the mask you would now would see a, 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 a compensated defect, but on wafer it would print as a straight line. So that is one of the, the mask defect techniques that, that is new to EUV. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to spend time to basically, and it's also a, a whole um, um, ecosystem that you basically have to go <laughs> yes, through to, yes. to, to detect that, what tool are you going to use to detect those defects. So, but there are a lot of progress made on masks. Resist, same thing. Uh, for resists, um, we have now at this point uh, one of our POR resists uh, uh, evaluated. Mm -hmm. That's the one that we're using on the ADT system. It's the first one we're going to be using on the NXC 3100. Okay. But for resists, it's still about screening the materials, mm -hmm. and their outgassing has been like one of these um, um, phenomena we have, we have to be basically be looking at, because to evaluate a resist, there is an, uh, an outgassing of the, of, of, of the polymers, so, and that could basically affect the lenses in the system, and for an, an NXC system, it's, it's every time that you have to open basically mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the tool, it's, it's, it's not what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So basically we are evaluating now tools that basically can help us to evaluate resists uh, and, and also basically to put, put specs on the outgassing okay. of the resists. Work is still in program. A lot of, of partners involved in the little program uh, at IMEC actually to look in all those three aspects of EUV. Well, yes. thank you, thank you very much for sharing this. <laughs> thank this you is, very this much. is a great uh, great summary. Yes, thank you very much. All yes. right, bye.